We appreciate uh, you guys attending the Y Texas uh, Summit. We're, uh, I'm joined here by John Boyd and uh, General Spaulding, as I always call him, but Robert Spaulding. And we're here to talk about Y Texas. And what I'm excited about talking about is uh, so much is about real estate that, ladies and, and it's our last people moving Alex, to develop their five, companies, five, communities, and Woo! other businesses in Texas. And SH-130 is one that's really been a, a pioneer with the development of you know Tesla and Samsung and so many others. Right. Maybe I'll go right, to guys, I'll Why Texas? Why SH-130? You, you know, in, in the site selection business, we tend to approach our projects in terms of corridors. Lord, right? Companies want to maximize their options with respect to real estate and talent assets and other resources. And the SH-130 corridor really has emerged as one of the nation's premier places for new business. And we think about the SH-130 corridor, similar to the I-20 corridor in Atlanta, uh, other high growth corridors like the I-4 corridor in Central Florida, uh, the I-10 corridor. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of hyperbole that happens in the, in the development world, but uh, it's not hyperbole to say that the future is happening on the SH-130 corridor with respect to autonomous vehicles, uh, uh, intelligent Carl, infrastructure, and um, of course the overall positive business climate of Texas. You know, a, a very common sentiment that our clients tell us is that, that job creators hard. get a better return for their hard-earned tax dollar in Texas versus so many other states. Uh, and uh, you know, today, Texas has the, the largest workforce in the state's history. And that's a credit to pro-business policies and the work of great organizations like Y Texas, which does a terrific job promoting Texas to a global corporate audience. Wonderful. So, so t Texas is one that embraces um, not only business, but community and, and the, the culture that people you know, come and, and move to. So with right. all that development, all right. that's a thousand it's, right it really there. leads to a lot of new infrastructure. So, so in general, we've been talking about intelligent infrastructure for, for years. You are now a lead innovator in, in a company that actually builds this infrastructure that will enable all these new services. Basic services like broadband to flat. every single Texan, Vision Zero yeah. to basically eliminate you know the deaths on the roadways. But more importantly, you've been thousand, steadfast yeah. on we have to think about securing data. And we have to think about the future is about this 21st century infrastructure delivering new jobs. And so how do you think about intelligent infrastructure, how do you think about Texas? Well, I come from a, uh, from a position of national security. So when I was in the White House, I wrote um, about the need for um, a national digital infrastructure plan that focused on where technology was evolving. And that was really uh, with regard to 5G. And so as a company, we focus on that vision, but we focus at the local level. So we build hardened, resilient infrastructure because it's not enough that the infrastructure is intelligent. You want to make sure it lasts through whatever happens. You know, what, what's happening today uh, in Florida is a tragedy. We build infrastructure that survives, whether it be natural, natural disaster or any kind of uh, enemy that could uh, potentially attack us. We build infrastructure that, that's survivable, not any more expensive. And the reason we can build it competitively to what infrastructure is built today is because of 5G and the ability to take that technology that's typically been in hardware and put it in software. What's gonna happen over the next 10 years is the electronics that our networks and our uh, data centers run on are gonna continue to shrink, continue to be more powerful. That's gonna allow us to deploy this infrastructure everywhere. But when we deploy it, it's so ingrained or such, so much a part of our society today. If it goes away, we're gonna be severely impacted. Like we didn't have smartphones during the first Cold War. Today, we use them to get medical attention, to get first responders, exactly. to make transactions, to shop, to you know, get a ride somewhere. It's become so much a part of our lives as opposed to where it was before. And we haven't looked at infrastructure in the same way that we did physical infrastructure. You know, we built the national highway system. That, um, that drove the development yeah. of the trucking industry and really our economy. We need to do something very similar with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, intelligent infrastructure that allows things like self-driving cars, self-driving trucks, you know, all the things that make our life better, easier, you know, and increase economic opportunity, but it has to be resilient, it has to be secure. And we've, we've also talked about how the last 50 years has been so much about software, you know, like it's all about electronics, but now we're seeing a transition where it's all about how the software and technology starts to impact 
everybody in their society, in their community, in their cities and down, down our highways. Well, everybody wants yeah. to be a software startup yeah. and everybody wants to do software. That's well, honey, got a the guts of the system, that software has to run somewhere and you have to depend on it. When I talk to first responders, they say the first thing to go is the network. Yeah. Well, if you're you know, worried about getting somewhere or getting medical attention or getting a first responder, you don't want that network going down yeah. right when you need it the most. So, I mean, this is a type... We need to start thinking differently. You know, Texas had this with the, yeah. when the grid goes down. The grid yeah. goes down, the network goes down. Yeah. This is a big problem for us. Agreed. And that's where it's, it's magical, where all the innovations all that we've right. uh, built up over the last 50 years really now place in the strengths of developers. Yes, because where this goes is in the communities, in these Thank corridors, so on private campuses, Woo! to basically bring these innovations forward, make sure that they're resilient, and then we activate all these new jobs. And Absolutely. Yeah. So right. any other thoughts about, I mean, I know one thing that you focus on too is, is, is this community development, realizing that as all these new businesses come into the community, you have to actually have the homes and the, the retail and the establishments that support the communities. Right, growth has to be sustainable. Yeah. And that's an effort uh, uh, that involves collaboration between policymakers and, and, the, and the, the business community. And I would just add this thought. I mean, you know, why Texas? There's a lot of reasons you know, why Texas right now, okay? It's, it's the the in-migration of talent from around the globe. It's the mid-continent location with unique access to the global marketplace. It's workforce training resources, it's infrastructure. Um, and it's the, the, the uh, willingness of policymakers to treat business as partners in building a viable and sustainable economy. And that's not the case in so many other states around the country today. Well, I'm convinced that Texas is gonna become the state of the future and it's gonna be innovators like you and, and developers like you to basically you know, make it. Any other thoughts? I think um, from a, just from a Texas perspective and really from a national perspective, building stuff yeah. is important. Uh, like agreed. infrastructure and is important. Stage, and we have kind of, you know, as a nation, we we've suffered. gotten away from building stuff, building, having manufacturing industry. You know, I really believe in the next 10 years, you're gonna see massive building going on uh, here in the United States like it has in, in the last 30 years because we've been sending all that capital to China to yeah. build their, their infrastructure, their manufacturing. It's time to build. And if Texas builds it, you know, they will come. And that's what we're starting to see. If you build the yeah. infrastructure that supports a modern, technologically sophisticated economy right. that's durable, resilient, survivable, yeah. Businesses are going to flock to Texas because it's all America is about economic opportunity. In order to have economic opportunity, you got to have the infrastructure, you got to have the manufacturing, Agreed. you got to have the jobs where people can raise their families and feel like there's a future, there's hope. And I think that's the thing that we've been lacking for the last 30 years that we really need to get after here. I, I love it. And I, I do believe Texas, yeah, Industry 4.0, Texas is going to lead. It was Frank Turner, we, we talked about this as well, Frank Turner, 1956, Texas AM grad that engineered the interstate highways. We're about to see the engineering of the intelligent infrastructure that drives all these new economies. And Texas loves to build. As we, you know, what happened when the energy crunch happened, Texas stood up and we went and drilled holes and built the, the economy. So I'm looking forward to why Texas 2023 and what more we can do. Thank Absolutely. You.